There's a very large misconception about blocks per building that I find pretty common when going into random servers. People believe that building in Bloxburg is something that's super hard and incredibly difficult to learn. When in reality, it's not, and I promise you, it's a lot easier than you think. I'm sure basic shapes and all the new update items can seem intimidating, but once you play around with them, it's extremely easy. This video is going to focus on how to become a better builder when dealing with exterior, structural, ideas, color schemes, all of that stuff. So if you're looking to improve your building, develop a better style, or just learn more about Bloxburg in general, or if you're just a regular French Roses viewer, hey guys. Of course, there are many ways to build a Bloxburg house, but they all do require the same core steps to be cute and also functional. This house right here that you're looking at is my blush mansion. You probably think this build is so incredibly hard to make and to come up with an idea like this is impossible. If I take away all the coloring and decoration, the house looks very simple. This is literally all it is. It just looks so much more intimidating when there's so many things around it, which is when you're watching speed builds and you look at a thumbnail, your first idea is this is so difficult, I can't do this. Everything you do in building is just leading lines. What are leading lines exactly? <laughs> The standard definition of leading lines is a compositional technique that uses line shapes to direct the viewer's eye to a specific subject or detail. When you're watching a tutorial of a game and there's arrows pointing you to where you should go, that's the same thing. It's indicating where the house is, where the center of the house is, and what you want to be the focal point of the house. So for this house, you could see the two paths. They have different patterns, but they still do the same thing, which is frame the house and make your eyes go straight. So because there's two of the same lines, which is the driveway and then the side diagonal path, you can figure out where the middle of the house is or the entrance of the house is just by the layout of the paths. So right in between the two paths is the entrance of the house. I know this probably sounds confusing, but I'm gonna go more into depth as the video goes on. Before you start building, it's very important that you have some sort of envisionment of what you wanna do. This obviously doesn't apply for everyone, but this is something I do. So you can use websites besides Roblox to find inspiration such as Pinterest, Google, basically any app that has a search bar or a discover page, just anything that like randomly generates stuff. That's where you can find so much inspiration. Me, myself, I have a Pinterest board because for me, Pinterest is just the most helpful website. Once you search one thing, you can click on the image and it'll show you more similar things so you can build a strong theme for your house. So for example, we'll look at this one. And then obviously if I want more cottage builds, I'll just scroll down and then there's a bunch of different cottage build inspiration right there at your fingertips. Another way to find build inspiration is from the game The Sims. I will just look it up on Google or on YouTube because Bloxburg was based off of the game The Sims. A lot of the items and features that are provided in Bloxburg are the same thing. When looking for a house to build, you can find a really accurate up to scale looking house that would translate well to Bloxburg. Obviously, not everyone uses inspiration. This is more of a preference thing. I find myself late at night scrolling through Pinterest, finding ideas for videos, and that's when I get inspiration. Once you figure out what type of house and style you wanna do, that's when you start actually like placing down the structure and foundation. I speak for myself, I start with walls first. So right now I'm going to build a modern mansion. Here's the thing about modern homes. As you guys can tell just from the pictures, they're very geometric. Everything's very like square shapes, large squares, big windows that sort of thing. So I'm gonna try to mimic that and make a modern mansion to fit the idea of what a generic modern mansion would look like. As you can see while I'm building this, I used around the same size width walls. Some are more face forward and then others are back. So it's kind of like a little staircase curve that just creates a dimension. Obviously you want a functional home, but you also want something that's attractive. For me, I typically use three sets of walls for a standard house because I think that's big enough. That gives you a lot to work with because you don't want your house to be extremely wide or extremely long. Three separate walls in an orientation that's like one's in front of the other or one's behind the other is a really good way to just make a nice simple sophisticated house so obviously just looking at this with walls placed it looks really bad when you're building it's not going to look perfect the moment you place walls don't just instantly delete a build just because you don't feel it looks right the only things you're probably missing are just like very simple structural items to add dimension and a more like in-depth 3d view of the house Typically when I look at modern mansions, I like when they have very strong focal points and leading lines. Anything that'll give you dimension is what you want. And that could be windows, pillars, basic shapes, all of that stuff. So in this part of me building, I use basic shapes to create 
a barrier for the house. The way I use basic shapes is I use them as a wider version of a pillar because you can't stretch a pillar to be that wide. And I find myself using pillars all the time to just sharpen the idea of a house and you could just define the walls. So by using the basic shapes, which also give that effect of a pillar, it does cost a little more money because you have to use the resize tool, but it's very worth it in the way of how it makes the house look. I put them on both sides of the house to make it look more unified and also parallel to keep that idea of the house because we have the three walls going up every time and then we have the two walls on the side. Since there's a lot of square shapes going on with the walls and now the basic shapes. I'm adding pillars to just add on to that idea to keep everything very cohesive and following the theme. And then of course, I'm now adding the flat roof and raising it up just a little bit just to continue that like square theme. So it's very important when building a house to just keep following the certain theme you set. And with modern, everything's very geometric as I said before. So I just keep repeating that idea of squares and different shapes and sizes. It's not overwhelming in any way, it's just repeating in a very cohesive way. All I added was a few pillars, some roofs, and basic shapes on the side just to give it more of a framing to the house. It looks a lot more expensive. This house is like very symmetrical in a way where there's lines. When looking at the house from front view, there's two lines on each side right here, and they're not the same height, which makes them look different. And then we also have the two roofs that are the same exact style, going opposite directions, and one's longer than the other. So now that we have the modern outline of walls, once I add windows, it'll make it look bigger and more open. So here I am placing just windows to match the modern vibe, which are full wall windows. If you were building, say, a colonial home, this would be different. You'd do the smaller windows with the cute little stripes and the shutters. <laughs> I can't think of the name right now, but you get what I mean. Basically, just use inspiration pictures to kind of follow the theme. Because if you're unsure of a style, I'm sure you can find it online and match the windows. And especially with modern houses, resizing the windows is a huge thing because you want it to be the full length of the house. I hate seeing gaps in modern home windows because it's supposed to be like a very flush with the wall, smooth, modern window style. Another thing I'd like to preface is that you don't need game passes for a good house whatsoever. In fact, I think that learning without it is much better because you think of ways to work around those obstacles. Once you become good without using game passes, I believe you'll be much better when you do have them. If you're building without transform and scale, it's probably a lot easier just to get the basics down because when you're messing around with so many items in a menu, like for example, if you know what Photoshop is, there are so many different random settings, but obviously everyone starts with the basics and you don't need game passes to make a house look good. I've made many houses that were no game pass and I think they look better than some of the builds I've done with game passes. For example, I'm gonna take this house and we're going to make a no game pass version of it. The only thing you can't do without game passes is you can't place a wall and then a pillar first, but there is a way around this. You just place a pillar first and then a wall. Here's a one story no game pass version of the house I built over here. I'm going to show you guys some of the houses I've built in the past that look like they have game passes, but they don't at all. Here's my Valentine's Day no game pass home. There's so many ways to bypass like collision check and all the other ones. Just because you don't have game passes doesn't mean you can't make a pretty house. Here's another no game pass home I've built in the past and you can't even tell. The best way to make a no game pass home is just by using small grid for everything because you could place everything super close and it'll look like you have advanced placement. I don't think you could tell that this was no game pass. I feel like this looks like a advanced placement home. It's just all about positioning and the grid you use. Now the next step when building a house is of course you're not just gonna leave the house with grass surrounding it and it just like floating in the middle of a plot so you need things such as a driveway paths gardening anything that'll follow your eyes to the center of the house which is leading lines and now there's so many different variations to making a path so i'll show you guys a few ideas Here's a quick concept I came up with, which I used flooring, a pool, and paths. And basically what I did was you could see the outline of the house is connected by these little square stone paths. And then on the inner part of the path is the inside, which curves. So you can basically see where the entrance of the house is just by seeing the direction the path goes in, which is like this curved angle. Here's another concept you could do for a modern house. So here we could see directly where the entrance is because of the carpets. And there's just like the direction that instantly goes straight to the door. Then these are like the framing sidewalk that connects to the door as well. And I just like adding pools. With modern houses, it makes that rich touch. So it just makes it a lot better. And then of course you could spice it up even more by adding stones and such. But 
Since we already have stripes here, I think that should be this main focal point. So there's many different ways you could do it. You can use paths in different variety to surround the area or to lead to the focal point. The main thing I want you to take from this is that use the house's shape as a blueprint to figure out how to make a path and how to make your eyes go directly from this street to do your front door or whatever you want your entrance to be. The next thing that follows driveways and paths is gardening and fencing and these two go hand in hand with each other. So the thing about gardening that I really like is now with blocks we're getting updated so much there's a lot of new items which definitely contribute to adding texture and all of those sort of things to your build. If you were trying to build like a beachy modern house that's where plants would come in or if you were building a winter modern house then you would use the pine trees and that sort of thing. So the gardening can really interpret the type of theme you're going for further and then fences are pretty nice because sometimes people like to put multiple things on their plot so fencing separates where things go the front yard to the backyard and just like that privacy aspect if you're a role player and of course it also contributes to the realism part of Bloxburg most modern day houses do have fences another thing about gardening is when you're placing plants you want to make sure it looks very natural so it should look messy and things should be colliding with each other and if you don't have game passes there are many ways to just like work around this place plants super close to each other with the small plot with beachy homes the rocks really add a nice touch i'm not going to paint anything right now just because that's going to be safe for the next step you can easily tell that this is a modern beach house just because of the palm trees and all the gardening that surrounds it and it also makes the house look bigger in my opinion with all the flowers when we move on to the next step, which will be coloring, you'll see how everything ties together really well with the theme. The last and final step, and also my favorite step ever, is color schemes. When you develop a color scheme and play with colors, see what works, depending on your build and the theme and just the person you are, you'll obviously have a different color scheme to another person. And that's amazing. I love how everyone's unique and likes their own things. For me particularly, I have a very like vibrant and pastel color palette. Let me just tell you, when I'm building and I'm picking a color scheme for a house, it is not first try. I play around with colors. If you watch my videos, you will know I am like constantly messing with the color wheel and testing out different combinations to see what works best. You need patience for this step, so just keep playing with colors. And as time goes on, you'll develop your own color scheme and style. And it's totally okay to use other people's color schemes. When I started building, I would watch speed builds and I would just follow whatever the person was doing. And that's when color scheme came along. I would just follow what I was comfortable with, which is what I was watching. And it was a lot of neutrals and pastels. And then eventually I kind of branched out and tried my own things. And I was like, hmm, I think this works better. And then from there, you just learn how to develop your own style. So it's totally okay if you want to, in the beginning, follow someone else's, take inspiration. That's how you learn. And of course, if you're going to like copy someone's exactly, just give them credit. A lot of people have been asking me to drop the color codes for most of the color schemes that I use in my videos. So if you want to pause the video here, I'm going to show each color and each code that they have. This is the house fully colored. I basically match the color scheme to what I interpret being beachy, which is like super pastel, light tones, and all that sort of stuff, and then the sand. This is just like a, a little example of how gardening and coloring goes a really long way when building. So I asked a few people in the Bloxburg community who I'm good friends with, and I asked them what they think would be some helpful tips for people trying to learn how to build. One of them being Shio, someone who is very special to our channel. She makes the most wonderful art for us, and she does play Bloxburg so I wanted to ask her and then I also asked the two roaches Isaac and Annix how did you learn how to build in Bloxburg and what was the biggest thing that helped you so for me I'd say that I just watch other people build to be honest I never really had too much experience so I was just watching different youtubers and that kind of helped me in a sense I also really liked watching speed builds as well apart from that I think it was mostly just practice just trying stuff out myself and all that oh uh, <laughs> legitimately the right, best so thing basically what oh, I okay. did is I was <laughs> annex you first no you go first I think it's so just basically what I'm like honestly I don't even know what to say but you should just build just you should just build, build. <laughs> I I don't think I should be giving advice honestly because I'm not that good at building. Facts. I don't know. Just try things you've never done before. Yeah, oh, and copy be other people. Yeah, yeah. 
look at pictures of houses on yes. Google and try to rebuild them. Exactly. Like, exact copy. Pinterest, Twitter. Twitter, you can find a bunch of really good builders and you could copy what they're doing. Make sure you ask for their permission first. Oh, I would look at real pictures first, like set of Bloxburg. Yeah, but and then try to, to amateur it. builders, they won't know how to use basic shape structure. No, if anything, what you're them. saying is look at all these pros and now they're going to be confused because it's hard to imitate them. Just copy the pros. Just copy picture. And the second question I asked was, what would be your recommendation for someone who's learning how to build? So my recommendation would be mostly find different references that you can use, mostly on Pinterest as well, because that helped me a lot. Find different speed builders that, you know, give clear layouts and like instructions on how to build, because that's normally how I learn how to do stuff. Look up my how to build a house in Bloxburg video and just follow that video. And you know, listen, if that's not enough, I have another video called how to decorate your house in Bloxburg. Now that's another banger. Watch a bunch uh, of speed builds. Whose speed builds? It does not mine. matter. Just make sure they're good. <laughs> <laughs> no one really said mine. Mine. Watch my speed builds. <laughs> I think it depends on the person's preferred building style. style. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. If you want something yeah. unrealistic and pretty goofy, you might want to go to French Roses. Okay. If you want something that actually looks good, check out Anix. If you want something that's like depressing looking, check out Isaacs. I hope that you learned something from this video or got something out of it. Basically, building is just very trial and error. You're not always going to get a good house concept the first try. It's all about patience and practice, so just keep going and eventually you will improve. Of course, I think creativity is the most important thing of all. Always build how you want to build. If you want to make some crazy idea, do it. That's how you make your own style. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys would like an interior version of this video, let me know. Maybe I will do one in the future. You know you love me. XOXO. French Roses Girl.